I was telling Terry that as I was reading the book, I, I would highlight something, and I'd turn the page, and that would be the, the, the box focus, the, my, the very statement that had been the keeper for me was already pulled out, and there's so many of them, and I'll tell you where this takes you. It takes you to the vow of hope. And uh, this is how we really get intentional about making it a habit. I'm so glad this is an e-store offer, mm. the hope habit. And, you know, you've earned the right to talk about it, Terry, not just from your personal journey, but your ministry. And uh, we're going to do a little world tour with you here with okay. some wonderful video highlights. Okay. Tell us how you're bringing hope to people in very desperate places around I, the world. I had an encounter with the Lord in 1970. And he said, I'm going to send you into the hostile nations. And from that moment to this, we have gone to places that nobody else wants to go to. Uh, I attended the Billy Graham Association conference in Cape Town a year and a half ago. And they named the 10 hardest churches, 10 hardest countries in the world. Uh, our ministry is in four of them. Right oh. now on this screen. That was your son next to you there, wasn't That's it? That's right. And uh, we're in, uh, in Iraq. We're giving shoes out to children. And we're giving them Bibles. Uh, this is a collage of pictures. We found that shoes are an incredible way to reach Iraqi children. Hmm. And they will accept the Bibles, but they're really after the shoes. Here, here uh, I was in Burma, riding down a canal, much like Vietnam. It's, wow. it's really hot and uh, really damp. Here is a f another food delivery. Uh, this, this is barren Iraq. This house, the house behind, was blown up in an explosion and uh, nine of a little girl's relatives were killed. She was the only one to get out alive. We were able to help her. Um, in some of the pictures, uh, here are uh, widows in Afghanistan learning how to write. There's a baptism in Iraq in the northern part of uh, of Iraq, it's to see someone baptized over there. Wow. It's a very emotional experience. Well, that's life-threatening for that new believer. It, it is. I baptized eight pastors. There's my son. Uh, mm -hmm. Eight pastors, or uh, five pastors, excuse me, from Iran, in the Marmara Sea, south of Istanbul, and the emotion that they expressed when they came and were buried in the water and, and raised to life. It's uh, uh, this again. Now is Afghanistan. It's a school where we teach widows and orphans to read and write, teach them computer skills, and uh, uh, teach them linguistic uh, talents as well. Such that, diversity in it, what you offer that, is wonderful. That means that they'll be able to get a, a job and take care of their children. The average widow in Afghanistan has four to six children. Here we are in Burma. Wow. This is, uh, these are villages in Burma. We traveled out on little boats down the canals out into the jungles. It was amazing. Here we're praying with all of these are pastors in uh, Myanmar. We support them and uh, we work with them and we're just uh, laying hands on people speaking the blessings of the Still Lord. Still much them. devastation there I'm sure. Oh it is. It really yeah. is. Communism has got uh, Burma in a, in a firm grip. But, and there's a beautiful face right at the end. You're living the high adventure. Yeah, um, Still, recently Carrie. I was just in Egypt uh, two months ago looking at the prospects there. As you know, they had the election in January and the, uh, uh, the Islamic Brotherhood and the Salafis got 65% of the vote and it's been very difficult for ethnic Christians in Egypt right now. Mm. Uh, there's 10 million Coptic uh, Christians in Egypt. Um, we gave out about a thousand food parcels when we were there in Egypt. A lot of persecution. R right, and uh, we were working with a garbage church, a church mm -hmm. associated in the garbage dump of Cairo. There's 17 million people in Cairo, and we were out there in the garbage. You can't believe, I can't even describe the situations that people live in. And it's incredible to be able to take food, medicine, shoes, whatever, uh, something to make their life brighter. And, uh, and then to obviously share with them our faith and the fact that we love Jesus so much. And uh, really, hope is what drives me, Moira. Mm. Because I hope, I go to Iraq. Because I hope, I go to Afghanistan. Well, and for 40 years, you've seen the difference right. that hope based in faith in Christ makes. Oh, absolutely. In all these countries. I've got something I have to share with you. Um, now that we've 
some are meeting you for the first time, I'm sure, and we see a little bit of how you live and what you're doing. A woman, I'm just going to say Ray's first name in Edmonton, knew you from the time you were three. Okay. When your dad was pastoring in a neighboring town or village that would be in Saskatchewan. In Saskatchewan, yeah. Exactly. No. And she's particularly thankful for your life story, which I believe is the power of praise and worship, mm -hmm. which really helped her when she had a wild teenager and was raising him, mm. getting through that. But she was watching you being interviewed, um, I think a few years ago. And, uh, well, let me, let me read what she says here. <clears throat> I haven't told you how I got into making these crosses. She mm -hmm. tats. Uh -huh. And um, she says, I was watching Terry Law of World Compassion being interviewed. There he was, telling of going into far-flung, highly dangerous, unreached areas of the world with the most important message that ever was. While I sat in my old chair, tying knots in little bits of string, my heart wept before the Lord at the contrast. Then, and she says, this is too sacred to share publicly, but she said I could. Though I saw nothing, I was keenly aware that Jesus was standing only a foot away, a little to my left, looking at me, smiling with a tenderness, love and acceptance I could never begin to describe. He spoke these words into my spirit. What is that in your hand? If you're ever to visit me in this little apartment, I could show you exactly where he stood. I'm not super spiritual or a mystical type of person, Moira. That was real. Wow. So your example initially caused some heartbreak, but now is the uh -huh. inspiration wow. for a ministry that continues to bring something that points people to Jesus, hmm. whether it's a do doctor's office or anywhere she happens to be, and you're going to have to take some of these with okay. you. Okay, I'll, I'll be glad Isn't to take Isn't that special? Them. Oh, thank oh. you. <laughs> Terry, you say something really profound in this book. Every minute of your future is still yours. That's right. Choice. Uh, Stephen Covey wrote a great book on the seven habits of very successful people. And uh, his comment is one I've never forgotten. He says, I'm asked by millions, this guy's a major motivational speaker around the world. He says, I'm asked by millions of people, what's the most singly important idea that has ever captured your mind? And he said, I have an answer. It's immediate. He said, I have the power of choice. Mm -hmm. That is the greatest single fact of our lives. We can choose hope. We can choose to do what God has called us to do. And uh, that's what I want to emphasize for our listeners today. And when we make that choice, we will find God's goodness, however hard life may be. This is at our e-store. Here's how you can get your copy. Crossroads.ca if you're on the internet or call our toll-free number, 1-800-265-3100. Oh, wouldn't it be great if hope was our calling card, as Terry says, our habit. Terry, keep coming back. I will, Myra. Love to do it. And you keep coming back, okay? We'll just.